Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's that time of the week we're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, we're starting off with a couple new Knife Center exclusives. New versions of the Artisan Cutlery Centauri in liner lock form in both large and small, and we've got red and black linen micarta handles paired with the black coated S35 VN blade. Very cool, again, very different look for this style of knife. Uh, we showed this color combination on a Rhea last week, I think. So it's kind of taking that slightly more classy profile and getting a little more aggressive with it. And you see that here as well. Blade length on the smalls is just under three inches long. And even on that small, even though you don't have the uh, roughly three and a half inch blade of the larger one, with this kind of modified Warncliffe shape here, really nice for some kind of heftier feeling cuts, but still plenty of tip work or plenty of uh, narrowness at the tip to do more delicate work and piercing, opening packages and that sort of thing. The S35, of course, you're gonna have a nice, good, long lasting edge and the black coating there pulls back into the black titanium pocket clip, as well as the backspacer and the pivot ring. Just very all, overall a very cool looking knife. I like the aggressive vibes. I like the linen micarta as well. It's got a bit of a matte texture to it. It's gonna feel really good and have a pretty good amount of grip, even if it gets a little wet because of that kind of ragged texture there. Very nice. Now these are front flippers, and as a result, you don't see a flipper tab sticking down here when it's open. You've got a nice, clean profile, thanks to Ray Laconico's design. Inset liner lock to lock things up. And there, when you see I close it, we've got a front flipper to activate this guy. And it works pretty well, even for me, who I don't always have the best of luck, which you're gonna see a little bit later. Uh, if you'd like something like a thumb stud, uh, one of our uh, sales guys upstairs, or one of our customer service guys, I should say, uh, put one of our quick studs on there to uh, it's just like a screw on type of thing there and works really well We'll see if we can maybe get a picture of it uh, to inset He did that on one of our pack of wood versions, but very very cool knife Next up we've got a new CJRB which of course is the budget sister to artisan cutlery and black coated blade here as well But we've got an RPM 9 powder metallurgy steel uh, I guess I should tell them the knife model, shouldn't I? You might as well. It's the Feldspar, ladies and gentlemen. Um, large size currently in uh, in these black RPM9 versions. Not uh, They haven't put out the small just yet. Uh, so what that means is you've got uh, about a three and a half inch blade with that excellent powder metallurgy steel there. They, they formulated it to still sit on the budget spectrum, but it should be competitive with stuff like D2 in terms of edge retention, kind of give or take a little bit. But... It's also stainless, which is quite nice. And these guys come in at about 50 bucks right now. Now it has a very different shape than that Centauri we just looked at. Although maybe if I hold it upside down. Pretty close. Actually, that's kind of similar there. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. But similarly uh, to that Centauri, you still have a nice acute tip here so you can pierce really well and a different cutting profile. You've got a lot more belly here, but still a nice long sweep for some bigger cuts if you need it. Handles are G10. This is the green option, but we've got black and orange as well as a carbon fiber too. Liner lock here is inset, also black. And like the Centauri, we've also got ball bearings in the pivot with this guy but it's not a flipper, but we do have thumb studs. You're not gonna have to add that uh, second hand if you like. Uh, deep carry pocket clip as well, which is reversible for either side. And one of the really good things I like about the uh, this particular model, the Feldspar, is that handle shape. Reminds me a little bit of something like the Benchmade Griptilian, not in terms of its like contouring per se, but it's got this elliptical shape that's gonna work with a wide variety of hand sizes very well, because it's quite neutral. It's not gonna cramp your grip. And even if your hands are bigger, they're just gonna kind of fall off this gentle slope on the side, and it's not gonna feel like you can't hold onto the knife. All right, next up, we've got a new Finch. This is the model 1929 Barlow Flipper. And I'm really digging this guy. It's about 125 bucks. Blade, two and a half inches, 154 cm. Nice, looks like a hand rubbed finish almost. I mean, it's not even 
it's not even like a perfectly straight machine finish. There's a little bit of uh, irregularity to the lines. It really does have that hand rubbed look. I really like that. But what I like even more than that is that this is a frame lock flipper, but you've got bone handles on this one. G10 is also available, but it's not too often you see bone on this style of knife. Uh, which is really cool since this is kind of reminiscent of an old school Barlow just with a modern twist. It's cool to see some materials like that bone here. And they call this uh, bolstered nightcrawler ribbed red bone inlays. Bit of a mouthful, but it's really cool looking. It, uh, it's intentional lines kind of jigged in. I guess I shouldn't say jigged. Intentional lines kind of cut in, but it almost has a similar vibe to like an old school saw cut bone in a way. Pretty cool. As far as the usable length, it's about a three and a half finger grip for me. Uh, blade length, like I said, two and a half inches, really nice profile, big aggressive tip there. And unlike some old school slip joints, old school Barlow's, you can pierce a little more, um, shall we say confidently, because you do have the backup of the lock right there. Milled pocket clip on this side as well. As far as the action, we do have ball bearings and it is a flipper in this case. Look at it. Look at that close too. I love the Barlow vibes of this and I love that red bone and it flips really nicely too. All right, next up, we've got another small knife, a little bit smaller, a little bit more expensive, about 135. And this is the fifth generation of the ProTech Runt. Really cool little knives, a few different versions right now. You've got the blue handled aluminum right here, which has a really cool color. You've also got black. Both of those are available with the smooth side. And we had for just a hot minute, uh, black with the uh, dimpling on the front side. I'm not sure if those are coming back or not. I hope they are, uh, but they did move pretty quickly. Speaking of dimpling, one of the cool things about all of these runs is this section here where normally, or sometimes you might find something like jimping on some knife designs. You've got some dimpling right there. It gives you a little bit of extra surface area. You can definitely feel it. Let's say, you know, you're pushing on the side of the knife, your finger can move a little bit. It's, it's smooth, not slick, but you know, it's not going to stop your finger, but the way these are milled in, push my finger there and it, or push my thumb there and it definitely catches. It's not sharp at all, but it definitely gives you that retention. I've got a deep carry pocket clip, as you can see, bead blasted finish to it. And it's inset into the handle with flush mounted screws as well. So it's gonna be very easy in and out of the pocket and very discreet. And that's kind of the name of the game of the runts. This is one of those California compliant knives with the blade just under two inches. Uh, and that is one of the other exciting things about this knife is CPM 20 CV on the blade steel. They've bumped it up from the uh, 154 CM of the old models and a lot, a lot more edge retention going on there. Good stone washed finish on this blade. And They've, uh, they've kind of pulled in some of the influence of the success of their Malibu flipper into these knives. You've got this modified Warncliffe shape here, and this is also going to be available, I believe, in a reverse Tonto, the same two blade shapes as that Malibu. Of course, it wouldn't be a review of a ProTech Automatic if I didn't show you the action, but before I do, nice detail that I like here, the, the push button and the pivot hardware is also stonewashed uh, or bead blasted, I should say, to match the pocket clip there. Normally, I'm not a huge fan of bead blasting just in general, but it really works on this knife for me. I do like that. And let's just listen to that ProTech action. That's the stuff. That should be, that's some like knife ASMR right there into the microphone. You, you want to do it one more time? Get it closer. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. That's good stuff, you guys. <laughs> All right, next up we have a new Baron Sun Balisong, and it's not the uh, the kind of very affordable versions you may be used to. This is higher end, higher end fit and finish as well, and higher end blade steel S thirty five VN for these thirty fifth anniversary or sorry thirtieth anniversary editions comes in about one sixteen right now, uh, and then for a little bit less, there's a D two version as well. The grind lines are very precise here, not at all like kind of the uh, the very affordable bears which. Uh, are not this precise. It's good to see that. And if you're going to use this as an actual cutting implement, you've got that good S35 VN as well. Spine not crowned or, or chamfered a little bit. That might be the only uh, slight drawback here on this particular knife, but the rest of it is also much improved or, uh, or much higher end 
from the uh, the lower end of their lineup because you don't have pinned construction here. You've actually got adjustable pivots with brass washers there on the inside. Makes it very smooth feeling indeed. Stainless steel on the handles, bit of contouring latch on the safe handle, or sorry, on the bite handle uh, as is usual on most ballast songs. But it's just really cool to see Bear and Son kind of elevating their game, taking the next step forward. They've done some really uh, cool higher end ballets for uh, folks like Bradley uh, with their latest Kimura, that sort of thing over the years. It's good to see it under their own brand name now too. All right, next up, we've got a bunch of small pry bars from Maverick Customs. This is uh, kind of right along the middle size. We've got larger and smaller than this four inch version right here. Uh, and they come in about a hundred bucks. For that, you've got titanium. This one has a frag texture, but there's smooth, there's drilled versions, there's versions with some crazier anodizing going on if you like something like that. Deep carry pocket clip as well to keep it tucked away and on your person and very easy to access. Bottle opener on this one, some do, some don't have that. And then of course that nice pry tip there at the end. Now if you'd rather not carry it in your pocket using that pocket clip, you could of course put it on your key ring with that, uh, that lanyard hole, we'll call it a lanyard hole anyway, there on the end. And it's gonna look really good, I think, even if it's like banging around with keys, it's gonna give it some nice wear, which speaking of, everything on there is already nice and chamfered over. There's no real sharp edges to speak of. Maybe a little bit here on the end of the, the bottle opener there, but that's not at all a negative. It's not like sharp or pokey. Just everything else is very supple. It's not the right word, but let's go with it. Very cool in any case. All right, next up, we've got a new X-Series knife from Enrique Pena. This is the Mini Diesel, and they come in about 300. And even though it's a Mini, still a fairly beefy knife to hold. Uh, blade itself, three and a quarter inches, M390. Compound grinds with that recurve drop point profile going on. Really cool shape. Handle itself, you've got your titanium uh, with integral bolsters. G or sorry, Micarta on this particular one, there's also a carbon fiber and a couple other Micarta colors which can be had. And it does do a good job of giving you a solid hold on that knife. It's not super thin, it's not super thick either. It's just enough for some heavier cuts. And we've got a milled titanium pocket clip here on the back to keep it secure. Nice hidden lanyard point there at the back and you can see some jimping uh, there or crenellations I should say integrated into that backspacer as well. Nice frame lock style of lockup, and you can open it either with the flipper tab or those thumb studs. Either one, it's gonna work very nicely thanks to the ball bearings in there. It has a nice, very friction-free style of movement. One thing I didn't mention yet, you do have a finger choil here at the front. You can choke up a little bit to use that tip a little more effectively. I do have a little bit larger fingers than most folks, uh, so I wouldn't really feel comfortable doing a big gorilla grip up in there, but with the fingertip there to, uh, to actuate that tip, it is pretty nice. All right, next up, we've got a new mark from Jerry Moen. This, these are some of his production knives as opposed to his customs. Uh, and as such, the price comes in a bit lower, about 320, which is lower compared to, uh, to the customs. Uh, and this is the tooling front flipper. Pretty cool knife, three and three quarters of an inch long on the blade, RWL 34 blade steel, pretty cool. And the handle here at the back uh, essentially resembles his mongoose flipper, except you have a more, I don't know, more standard or more EDC friendly blade shape because this is not the really aggressive um, heart, you know, recurve blade that those knives have, um, but you still get the cool swooping lines on the handle. The contouring is really nice. It really comes down a lot more acutely here at the, uh, the high point here on the back end of the handle and it just has a very natural feeling shape in the hand and plenty to hold on to as well as you can see. Now as far as the action on this particular knife, everything's put together super well. You got ball bearings in the pivot, but this is one of those front or top flippers that I had a little bit of trouble with and uh, I'm not gonna, Thomas was having a, a pretty easy time with it honestly, but I don't know if it's the way I'm holding it. I'm like putting a little pressure uh, on the lock bar underneath that Micarta inlay. Carbon fiber also available, I should say. But the last time I tried to do one of these top flippers, it was giving me trouble and I really like pushed through it to make it happen. I actually wound up getting stitches. So I'm not gonna do that on camera. That's fine, I got B-roll. You weren't filming when that happened and I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> 
Uh, so Thomas's uh, B roll, his other B roll, he'll show you how it uh, how it front flips because uh, he'll be able to do that. But you do have the blade cut out as well. You can open that with your thumb, no problem. And it also does the middle finger flick very nicely because, again, thanks to those bearings, very friction free type of movement as you open. All right, next up, coming in about 195, we've got two new versions or two versions of a new Justin Lundquist design from Wee Knife Company. This is the Eidolon. And there's actually four versions. You got two different blade shapes. You've got the uh, the dagger style blade that is single edged only. And then you've got just the standard spear point blade, which is hollow ground. Now, both of these blades can be had with both of these handles. You've got gray G10 here at the top with a white pivot G10 ring. Uh, or white G10 pivot ring. And on the bottom, we've got black with a gray G10 ring. Uh, but the only black coated blade version is the uh, the double edged one, or sorry, the, the dagger ground version, not double edged on the uh, the black handle here. But then when you switch to the, uh, the spear point blade on that black handle, that's also a stone washed finish right there. But cool thing, apart from all of that here, I'll, I'll use the gray one, it'll be a little bit easier to see on camera. This G10 handle is actually integral, single piece construction. Uh, not the first out there to do this type of construction, but one of the only ones out there on the market right now. You get a lot of strength out of that. You get the removal of any kind of seam right there. So there's less to uh, cause a hot spot or pinch point when you're really gripping the knife. And uh oh, we got another top flipper. This one I have no problem with though. Quite easy to open. Uh, part of that is just the geometry of the top flipper itself, I think. Uh, but also you've got an inset liner lock here. It's not a frame lock. So you're not gonna you know, accidentally put too much pressure on a lock bar. It's still gonna open very nicely. Um, price on these, I did say about 195. Uh, I don't think I mentioned the steel yet though. 20 CV, sub three inches. So very good edge retention and very EDC friendly in its size and shape. Deep carry pocket clip, it is milled, which is pretty cool. You don't often see a milled deep carry clip. Inset in the handle, flush mounted screws. And actually, as I'm looking at it here, this is impressive actually, you guys. Um, we've actually got uh, on the liner lock here, the screws that hold on that pocket clip are screwed in from the inside. That's pretty cool because there's no way to take this apart to actually get in there and screw it down. Um, so they must have some very, uh, very tiny screwdrivers to be able to make that happen. That's pretty cool. I am impressed by that. Uh, one other version I didn't mention, uh, I said there were four, I guess there's five. There's a carbon fiber version as well with, uh, with the 20 CV spear point blade. And that guy comes in about 230 right now. All right, next up, we've got another Ferrum Forge, and these are being built, uh, we're pretty sure, by Civivi, which is the same company as we, but the budget budget subsidiary. Uh, this guy is the Stinger, comes in at 90 bucks. Blade length, about 3.2 inches, Nitro V, similar in ways to that Feldspar from before that we looked at. So you've got nice piercing capabilities and longer sweeping slicing is capable as well. And this is a lot of uh, Ferrum Forge's folders right now. And this one especially strikes me as being very easy to carry. It's nice and thin in the cross section there. So it's not a, a big girthy knife, just focused on you know everyday utility for just smaller pocket knife needs. G10 scales over a liner lock, a couple different colors right now. Deep carry pocket clip. It is a single screw, but the way it's embedded in the scale with a flush mounted screw. I like the way it's done and it's kind of anchored into place by the surrounding G10. And then ball bearings in the pivot flips really great. And you do have a dual fuller here on each side. So you can do a thumb open if you want. And again, because there's no frame lock to kind of put your finger on, it's pretty easy. And let's see, can you do a flip out from that side? Might be a little tricky. Maybe not. Maybe not me anyway. Really cool knife, very easy to carry, great EDC coming in about 90 bucks right now. All right, next up, we've got a new Felicneven. This is the R2, which comes in about 192 bucks right now with an L-Max blade, which is not something you, you typically see from Felicneven. This is kind of a new material, or at least an unusual material for them. Powder metallurgy, definitely a step up from uh, the VG10 that they like to use on the base models, which is still a great steel. It's just, you know, in a different league compared to some of the real super high performance steels like this. 
Blade length is about three and an eighth. Plenty thick, we're about three sixteenths of an inch thick there. So it's kind of got classic compact survival knife vibes to it in a way, or any kind of smaller fixed blade that you need for heavier duty tasks. This is gonna work quite nicely. Even EDC, if you want something a little bit overbuilt, this is definitely gonna do the trick. We've got a convex grind, comes right down to zero. There's no secondary bevel here right at the edge. Really good performance, again, for some of those heavier cuts, especially on a, uh, a thicker blade stock like this. We've got a full length tang with over molded handles. Not super roomy, but enough there for all four of my fingers if I choke up on the, uh, the nubbin of the finger guard there just a little bit. So I can get a full grip behind this and really push through some things. I see this as being a really great outdoors knife, absolutely. Kind of a smaller camping companion if you don't want or can't carry something that's bigger. It's definitely, uh, definitely gonna go a long way to making sure you have a solid tool on your person. The sheath is very well done. It's injection molded. Clicks in just like most Felic Neven sheaths tend to, but you've also got this secondary lock here on the side, which when that is cinched down uh, on the uh, downward facing position there, you're not getting that knife out of there. It holds it in there pretty well indeed. As far as carry, simple belt loop here on the back, but you've also got two pass-through straps here. If you wanted to uh, do something a little bit different, you could probably mount onto there pretty easily. All right, next up, we've got a new case. This is a new version of their Equestrian's knife, which is a bit of a niche uh, pattern, I will admit, but I think it's pretty cool. Uh, and there's only one other version we have live on our site right now of this pattern as well. So it's definitely worthy of note. Comes in about 60 bucks, uh, US made, and it's built on the Trapper platform. But instead of two blades, you just get the single uh, clip point blade, this kind of California clip style. Uh, and these are these are stainless, I believe. This is not one of the uh, the CV carbon steels. That is correct. Uh, and on the instead of the uh, sp long spade blade on the second side, you've got the equestrian's hook here, essentially. Um, what do they call it? The hoof pick. I'll get my names right one of these days. Um, very specialized, definitely, but I could see this being useful in just kind of some oddball scenarios uh, as you go through things. Um, I say that, but I'm not actually sure what, but I'm actually, I'm kind of, uh, kind of interested to see what you guys think. Tell me some alternate uses for this particular guy. I think there, there's definitely something out there. And the other reason I wanted to put this in this video too, you guys know I love the yellow synthetic handles on knives like these. Very cool. All right, next up, we got a new bit of gear from Exotech. This is the X-Reel. They come in about 76 bucks, US made, and it's a fishing kit. And like a lot of Exotech stuff, there's a lot of stuff going on here that you don't quite pick up on at first glance. It's really a pretty sophisticated design for such a non-sophisticated fishing method, you know, hand lining essentially. Um, but you got aluminum body, 15 pound test monofilament around it. As you can see, it's, you know, it's cinched down or, uh, or wrapped down at the moment, so it's not gonna be free flying. Side here, you've got a silicone finger ring, so you can have a secure hold on that. As you go through, the silicone's gonna give you good grip when wet. But then here on the underside, you have something that's very exotech. You've actually got a compartment. O-ring sealed, so it's gonna be waterproof. And on the inside, you've got just enough space, space for a little bit of fishing tackle. It even comes with a couple of hooks, sinkers, and, uh, and bobbers or floaters. Fishing folks out there will, uh, will let me know which is more correct in this case. But you got everything you need right there in this, uh, this watertight compartment. You can customize it, of course, add some other types of gear if, uh, as well, if you wanna use it for its canister capabilities. And one of the cool extra considerations I really like these holes running all around the rim of the top, actually little places to put your fish hook when, when it's not in use. So you can stretch it, pop it in there, and you're not gonna have a, a sharp hook flying around on you. Very nicely considered and very nicely constructed as well. All right, last but not least, we've got a new brand here at the Knife Center called Knife to Meet You. Uh, slightly cheesy name, but I love it. And they are making a lot of cool stuff. Uh, basically, things designed to protect your knives. Got a nice leather knife roll right here. Hasn't even been uh, been rolled up once yet. They've got some leather pocket sheaths as well. A few different versions of those. And my favorite right now uh, is the Bag 16, holds 16 knives. 
Uh, this guy comes in about 90 bucks. It's got this nice denim material, real dark wash going on. And a couple of retention snaps, one here on the front, two on the back side. And it's gonna be difficult to do with a table of knives in front of me. Uh, Thomas may have to move them out of the way when he films the uh, close-ups of this stuff. Nice rigid uh, piece here on the side to keep that flat flap here to protect the knives when it's closed up. Some nice pockets. So how, how's this look over right now from that uh, camera angle? That'll do. Oh, well, that's one of the most positive things I've ever heard Thomas say, actually. What can I say? Really cool stuff. It's super high quality, very good feeling in the hand. You can see all the stitching is done impeccably. Feels very rugged and there is a ton of stuff to choose from right now. So we'll just link you to the whole brand below. Uh, that's about all I've got time for to show you today. So let me know what your favorites were as always and talk to me down in the comments. What do you like? What do you don't like this week? If you want to get your hands on any of these guys, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com and make sure you sign up for the Knife Rewards program. So when you put your money down on one of these products today, you'll at least earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.